Bounce back time for the Auburn Double Days, and we're here to break it down for you on the Auburn Double Days pregame show, brought to you by Keogh Community College. J.D. Rocci alongside Jack McMullen. Tough loss last night, 4-3 to three to the Tri-City Valley Cats. It was 2-0 Tri-City. Auburn bounced back, tied it up at 2. Then they went down 4-2, got one back, had the game tying run on second in the ninth. Couldn't quite drive them in. Yeah, and they were grit runs, too, for Auburn. And all three of the runs came on two sack flies and an RBI ground out. So that tells you what kind of game that Auburn had offensively. It's not really a game that you want. It's great that you are manufacturing runs and you're working on what you do in batting practice, and that's elevating the ball when you have the situation. It's putting the ball on the ground when the situation is present. But you got to string some base hits together to get a win. And you can't bank on your pitching staff allowing just two runs a game, three runs a game. Sometimes they'll let up five. You just have to score six. And it wasn't like it was a bad performance for the pitching staff at all yesterday. Rafael Gomez went six strong innings again. Back-to-back -back starts now where he's gone six strong. But it was an inning in which there were no base hits, but it was a two-run inning for Tri-City that really broke things open. No base hits, a couple of hit-by-pitches, a walk, a couple of fielders' choices later, and all of a sudden the game kind of goes out of whack. Right, and that was the problem. He hit two guys on two pitches to open the top of the fourth inning to Rafael Gomez. The other five and two-thirds, great. And the other six, well, he didn't even get it out. The other six innings, all 18 outs that he threw were great. And the guy dazzled, but he did allow those four runs. Two in the first, two in the fourth. And sometimes that's just the difference. And you know, you're not necessarily going to break a slump and score like you would in basketball, say. You might hit like a five or six minute, you know, drought without a field goal or maybe even a scoreless drought if it's really bad. But you're always going to break that. You're always going to hit that next three-pointer. In baseball, that's not the case. You might score in the first inning and be done scoring. So Auburn's offense really needed to show up after that. Only a couple of combined hits, five all together for Auburn yesterday. Only a couple of multi-hit games for those guys as well, and it continues to be the problem. You'll see games in which Auburn has 10, 12 hits, but then their, their pitching staff doesn't hold up their end of the bargain and they get beat around. Then you'll have games where the pitching staff's really, really good, and the offense doesn't hold up their end of the bargain. There's just not a lot of synergy and cohesion going on with this team right now. No, and something's going to give. That's always the conversation that we have. If the hitting is great, the pitching's going to give. If the pitching is great, then the hitting might be anemic that one day. So it's really balancing and finding that marriage of pitching and hitting, and defense too, if you want to throw that in, because Auburn did make two errors yesterday, as did Tri-City though, so that was just kind of a sloppy game through and through. Today, you're looking for an all-around performance, a really cohesive performance for Auburn, and that might spell win. And with just about a week, oh, almost lost the paper. Good. With just about good. a month left in the season, Auburn now sits 10 and a half games out of first place in the Pickney Division. Luckily for them, Tri-City might be a little bit worse. They sit 12 and a half back in the Stedler Division, so this is a matchup where you can see Auburn picking up two wins here, kind of getting some positive momentum, some positive juju going against one of those lower tier teams. Yeah, but in terms of the wild card, it's neck and neck between these two. Auburn, the third worst team record-wise in the New York Penn League. Tri-City second, Williamsport is the worst right now. Auburn can move from third worst to the legitimate seller if everything goes according to plan for the other two tonight. If Tri-City gets a win and Williamsport gets a win as well, then the run differential is in favor of the Crosscutters and Auburn drops into last place in the New York Penn League. Right now, Auburn is nine and a half back of that wild card spot, which goes to the best team record-wise that doesn't win the McNamara, the Stedler, or the Pinckney. Right now, Auburn nine and a half back of that, Tri-City 10 back of that, Williamsport 10 and a half. A loss can drop Auburn to 10 and a half. A win for Williamsport can get them up to 10 or nine and a half. And then that win would get uh, Tri-City up to nine. So this is a humongous game for the psyche and for not being at the bottom for Auburn to win. And of course the goal today is score one more run, at least one more run than the other team. Taking a look at the lineup that will do that today. It's an interesting construction from Rocket Wheeler. We'll see Ricardo Mendez at the top of the order. In the three hole, Eric Senior who has been really really good lately, but I think the surprise of this lineup and maybe just a strategic move from Rocket, a guy that ranks top eight in the league in batting average, Caldioli Sanflair, all the way down at seven. You're not necessarily going to hide Caldioli Sanflair because when he comes up, you'll hear the name on the PA and people will say, oh, that's Caldioli Sanflair. Tri-Cities manager Osni Guillen, he's not going to be fooled. He's like, who's that Sanflair guy? Did he lead off yesterday? I'm not sure. But 
Ricardo Mendez at the top, you have to get the guy his at-bats. In 15 games so far with Auburn this year after coming down from Class A Hagerstown, the 19-year-old has hits in 12 of those 15. He's riding a five-game hit streak right now, so Ricardo Mendez is going to pace this offense, and the rest will hopefully follow suit. That's the offense that Auburn will be throwing at Tri-City today. In terms of the pitching matchup, it'll be Todd Peterson taking the bump. Second career start for him. He's been a little bit up and down, but his last start was pretty good. He was also a part of that game with Jackson Rutledge, where they had a perfect game going into the later innings against West Virginia a couple of weeks ago. He's impressed at times and shown the reason why he was a top seven round draft pick this year. Todd Peterson had three relief outings before his first pro start. He went 48 pitches, 48 pitches, 49 pitches. Pitches. In his first start, he threw five innings, 68 pitches. I was talking to the pitching coach, Franklin Bravo, yesterday, and he said, there's no pitch limit with this guy. The Nationals are turning him into a starting pitcher, so he's going to throw starting pitcher innings. He's going to throw starting pitcher pitches. So if he goes above 68 pitches, that's uncharted territory for him in his pro career. But this was a long reliever at LSU. He wasn't the closer. That was Zach Hass, who we've already seen throw mid to high 90s at Falcon Park this year. but. Todd Peterson's a guy that can go long. Hopefully, he can go long and successfully tonight against Tri-City. Peterson's got a chance to be one of those guys that makes a big impact, but who's Abner's pick today? Who's the MVP of today's game? Oh, man, Ricardo Mendez. How can you not do Ricardo Mendez right now? The guy's swinging a crazy hot bat since coming back from his hamstring injury. Let's go, Ricardo. Keep knocking the ball around the ballpark. Ricardo Mendez leads things off for the Auburn Double Days tonight. First, first pitch at 7 o'clock tonight. You can hear Jack and I with pregame coverage on FingerLakes1.com at 6.50. Until then, so long from Falcon Park. This has been your Auburn Double Days pregame show presented by Cayuga Community College.